Hey, today is my birthday episode. It's not like this today isn't my birthday, the one you're watching this. And also today right now also is my birthday. Yesterday was my birthday. Uh, but it's the about the movies that I watched around my birthday. And so instead of last year, which was birthday bros, people who shared my exact, almost exact birthday, uh, this year is now bros who are around my birthday. So we got Steve Carell on August 16th, which is the day before my birthday, Robert De Niro on my birthday of August 17th, and then Andy Sandberg on August 18th, the day after my birthday. And the names of three movies that those guys were in, not respectively, are Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping, Foxcatcher, and Brazil. Stubbies. Pop star, never stop, never stopping. I was aware of this movie when it came out, but I was just like, I don't really like music related movie things, not that much. So I just kind of like dismissed it out of hand. But Reddit really loves it. And also I knew it had Imogen Poots in it. So I was like, all right, well, we can go for it. I do like some Lonely Island stuff. And yeah, it was great. I love this movie. It was co-written, co-directed, and co-starring Lonely Island, the trio, with Andy Sandberg being, you know, the most famous of the three. The premise is it follows all three of them. They were essentially like a Beasties boy group back in the day. But then Andy Sandberg's character gets all big and famous and decides to go at it solo. But that may or may not have been a big mistake. So it's basically like a mockumentary type of thing and it is so dang funny like I was laughing the entire way through it was great obviously the songs in it are amazing and I need to like listen to this soundtrack more because it is just uh, so good and just like it's just ah uh, the movie just works and like you're not surprised by anything with a plot, but this isn't the type of movie where you need to care about the plot. Like, you're not here for revolutionary story, you're here for a lot of laughs. And this movie delivers a lot of laughs. I will say, though, that I don't think this movie is gonna be... Uh, how do you say it? It's gonna age. Not age poorly, it's just gonna be very a time capsule of the mid-teens. Because though there are some timeless elements of the movie, there's a lot of references to stuff that happened recently that are gonna be lost very, very quickly. Because I just, like, barely remembered some of the stuff that they were referring to. Though I still did, and I thought they were hilarious. So, yeah, I without a doubt recommend this movie if you want a good fun time go for this movie as of recording this it's rentable and it is worth the four dollars to rent this movie it's it's a delight next is fox catcher this is a 2014 movie starring steve carell shannon tatum and I didn't know that was going into the movie, Mark Ruffalo. I knew this movie was about wrestling and I knew that it got good reviews, but I did not know that it was based on a true story. The basic premise is that Steve Carell plays this billionaire who decides to invest in a bunch of wrestlers to help them get to the Olympics. Now, this movie is a really well-made movie. It was shot really well, directed well. It was a bit slow at times, but it was done intentionally and it worked well. It was an interesting story. It was acted well. I quite enjoyed it. It was, it was a good time. Now, my kind of big complaint about the movie is more so in retrospect of just like reading all of the crazy stuff that the billionaire did and realizing that they told this story really wrong. The story is about two brothers who are wrestlers and a billionaire and they focused on the younger of the two wrestlers it should have focused on the billionaire and definitely still talked about the brothers and his relationship with them so this movie is like everything happens in the late 80s like in a couple of year time span and then like what the billionaire is known for what the whole reason this movie kind of exists is because of what happens about eight years after the events of the movie and like they do include that moment kind Kind of making it seem like it happened really close to the other events but it really happened way later and it's like the movie should have delved more into the lead up to this moment in relation to the rest of his life not just the events of this movie honestly i think this just should have been a documentary i think that would have served this story a lot better and again don't get me wrong this was a pretty dang good movie. It's just, I think a documentary could have knocked this story out of the park. But yeah, if it looks intriguing though, I would say go for it and then also read up stuff about it afterwards. Also, if you like wrestling, 
it's a good watch there. There's some really satisfying wrestling stuff that happens. So, yeah. And lastly is Brazil. This movie is from 1985. It is written and directed by Taron Gillen. I think my second one of his. It has Robert De Niro in it. I had a feeling he was going to be barely in this movie and he was barely in this movie but he was always a delight whenever he popped up. Contrary to what the title of the movie might suggest, this movie has absolutely nothing to do with the country of Brazil. It has to do with the song called Brazil which was definitely a good choice. This movie is like like an amalgamation of so much stuff and I kind of had a feeling about some of it that like I, I, I knew it was gonna be like kind of crazy and fantastical because it's Taron Gillen it's what you expect but like there was also a lot of noir stuff and there was a lot of comedy I was that was the thing I was most surprised by was like very British comedy and also it just aesthetically looks very 1980s sci-fi fantasy stuff and it's just it's really ridiculous and over the top it's got like so much visual noise and it's the stuff of my nightmares so at times i was just like oh, i'm really uncomfortable right now i don't like this well the premise is it's about this guy who lives in the near future that's very bureaucratic and dystopian at the same time he keeps on having these very fantastical dreams about this beautiful woman and then he he finds the beautiful woman in real life. What? That's crazy. And then the movie's just about him trying to find that woman more again. I don't know. It was interesting. I liked it. For some reason though, I just, it couldn't keep my attention. And that was really frustrating on my part. Cause I'm like, I want to watch this movie. I wanted to watch this movie for so long, but I'm not like, focusing on it. I liked all of the elements of the movie. It's just for some reason, them all compiled together was just like, yeah. So yeah, the movie was fine. It's all right. Middle of the road. That's where I put it. I don't necessarily recommend it unless you really like British humor, especially older British humor, and or you just like weird trippy shit because this movie's weird trippy shit. <laughs> Alrighty, now for today's rankings. First up, we got Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping sitting at 21 in the really liked category. And then after that is Foxcatcher sitting at number 85 in the quite likes section. And then bringing up the rear is Brazil sitting at number 127 in the liked category. And this is out of a total of 190 old movies so far this year. And that brings the grand total up to 231 movies so far this year. 